Hi, my name is Pastor Randy Jones and it's great to have you join the bridge today. We have the joy of the Lord, we have the peace of God, and I have a message today about safe spaces. There's a passage Not in Exodus. Not saving spaces like the no. store, but safe places. That's right. And we are delighted that you're here. And uh, I'll be sharing in just a moment. I want Nancy to greet you. And then we'll be uh, praying over you. If you have prayer needs, be sure and uh, email or text them. Also, if you have a praise report, feel free to uh, let us know and either talk with us, text us, email. Uh, we'll be including those in the end of our broadcast, our time of sharing this video. And God has opened some doors and we have a green light now from the Lord to step into reaching over 200 million people. And we'll be uh, launching that by Easter. So Nancy and I are here for you and uh, we're excited to hear from the Lord. He's spoken to our hearts today and affirmed, confirmed some things that we've been praying about for over a year now. And the doors are open, the resources are being made available, and for that we give God all the honor and the glory. So greet our friends and then I'll pray, then I'll come back, share uh, from Exodus, and then Nancy will come back at the end of the broadcast and give you an awesome testimony. Amen. Praise God. Well, good to have you with us today. Again, we're still in Southern California. Beautiful, sunny SoCal. Yeah. We have not seen anything but blue sky since we've been <laughs> here. <laughs> kind of a change from the Midwest, yeah. but we love it. We're enjoying it. And it's been And not wonderful. windy like last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are kind of calmer. Sorry for that. Yeah, that was kind of noisy. Sorry. <laughs> but um, we are here and we're glad that you're with us. And we would love it if you would... Um, go to our website, go to our um, YouTube channel, right. and like and subscribe. Be we sure to subscribe. To get... We need to hit a, a certain number for it to become uh, more effective. Yeah, lots of them. So give the thumbs up on there and, and hit the subscribe bell button. And when our videos post, then you'll get notification of it. You can watch it right then immediately when you get the notification, or you can watch it at a later time that's more convenient. So either way it works. Good. But the subscriptions do help us a lot, so we would love to have you do that with us. And um, we're thankful for the for the donations that have been coming in because that furthers the ministry that God is um, of, uh, making available to us. And so we're thankful for that. Mm. You can see the beautiful cross in the background. Awesome. And um, we're still at uh, the Santa Ana Orange County uh, First Assembly of God Church, and it's just beautiful. There are facilities here, and I love that cross and mm -hmm. up in the blue sky. And Reminds a, me of Val Vista's cross. It's a bell tower. There's bells there with it, too, and so it's really nice to have all that available to us. So um, I'm going to read a passage that correlates with Randy's sermon for today, and it is Exodus 33, and it's about Moses and the glory of the Lord. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people kind of reminding God. I think we've all done that a little bit right, a time or right, two, right? Right. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Wow. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Nance. Mm -hmm. Let's pray together, can we? Father God, I thank you for the chance to come before you and believe that you hear and that you answer prayer. Friend, just stop what you're doing right now and 
join with me. Silence whatever things in your life that are noisy. Stay tuned to your phone or the television if you're streaming this. I just believe that you're capable of taking some time to focus with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Heal people right now, Lord. I pray for those that are sick in their body that healing virtue would flow to them right now. Hallelujah. I believe, Lord, that you are touching people, those that have lost loved ones recently, encourage them. Those of us that have family that's up in heaven, help us to hear the cloud of witnesses that's cheering us on. I speak to heart trouble for those that need a touch to be healed. I speak to those who are suffering with any kind of pain. Pain, you are subject to us because we come in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, that you would remove the pain. You took stripes on Calvary. I pray for those that are suffering from emotional pain, those of us that have known people that have taken their own lives. I ask that you would comfort and heal and lift up and encourage. Minister, Lord, as only you can. I believe, God, that you're working in a supernatural way to some that are watching right now that are going through a financial difficulty. Hold on, friend. God's going to undertake for you. Some of you that are struggling in your own emotions, just stay close to the Lord. Don't go to the dark side. Stay with the light of Jesus. He's the one that will help us. I can tell you, Many, many stories of answered prayer, even in 21, of how God is meeting physical, financial, spiritual, emotional needs. Hallelujah. Receive your miracle right now, friend. I release it now. Now, friend, just grab a hold of what it is that you need. Receive it from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Some of you are making decisions about school, about a job, about your future. <laughs> the Lord wants me to let you know he's with you. You may not get all the pieces to the puzzle at the same time, but just start in. Read the word every day and start moving. It's a lot easier for the Holy Spirit to guide a moving vessel than somebody who's stopped, depressed, anchor in the water, not going anywhere. Lift your anchor, lift your hands, your sails. These are sails. And worship the Lord. Hallelujah. And God will move you into the place he wants you to go. Bless those who are seeking direction and open doors. Teach us patience, oh God. Bless Exodus to our hearts. Meet the needs of all who are watching this ministry right now in jesus resurrected name we pray amen amen hey god bless you thanks for watching today turn in your bibles if you would to a wonderful passage from exodus that nancy read to you and let me pull some powerful truths out of this notice that he says right off lead these people god is leading you and he's leading your family your church your ministry our state our cities our nation he's working and just keep a an eye on the lord sometimes it looks like the hour hand on a clock that you can't see it move like you can the second or the very slow movement of a minute hand an hour hand almost seems like it's not moving but it is moving God's got a time, he's got a plan, and he's unfolding that. I was uh, thinking of Pharaoh who was going to kill Moses. And we're going to be reading about this relationship that God had with Moses and really unpacking that to place it in our own hearts and our own lives. And notice that the devil had a plan to kill Moses. 
but Moses' mother, of course, put him in a, a little bit of a floating uh, kind of basket that she had lined uh, with pitch in order to make it float and placed it out by the river so the cries of the baby couldn't be heard by the military or those who were killing all the small children from Pharaoh. But notice that God then allowed Pharaoh's daughter to find it and rescued Moses because God had a plan. And God wants to rescue you in your situation. He wants to come and meet your need. And notice that uh, Moses' family was brought into the picture and even Moses' mother was able to nurse him. And he went to Pharaoh's kingdom, which seemed wrong at the moment, but actually that was the training that he needed in order for him to lead two to three million people out into the desert to the promised land. So sometimes when, when we're in a situation, make the best of it. We've been in a situation with COVID and things are opening up and uh, refuse to be depressed, refuse to accept fear, refuse to move down that destruction road and rise as Moses does here. And notice when he's being asked to lead, he asks a very important question, who will you send with me? And one of the important things of ministry is to be on a team of ministry. I enjoyed large teams at Val Vista Assembly of God that were running many ministries and we would have general staff meetings and plan and strategize together and pray together and the success of one built on the success of others. If the men's ministry was growing, they would bring their wives and the women's ministry would grow. The women's ministries would grow, they would bring the children. If the children came, the teenagers heard that there was awesome stuff. So one thing blesses and encourages another. And I, I really wanna encourage you to be on a team at church, at the place of ministry where you're involved. Notice that in this passage here, he says, teach me your ways if you have found favor with me. The Holy Spirit is your teacher now. I may be ministering the Word, but it's really the Holy Spirit that shows you how to apply biblical principles. <laughs> I hear sometimes somebody might say, a person like myself, or a, a maybe a much more well-known evangelist or a public TV minister, that they're my pastor. Let me correct that. You can't pastor people if you don't have a relationship with them. The people that are the core of the bridge ministry are people that are uh, in relationship with us in the Lord and our family or like family, and we do care for one another. So I need you to be involved in a ministry where you're a part of what God is doing. And notice that he's talking to the nation. While here it is specifically talking about Israel, Israel was a prototype. And throughout scripture, you can see that God chose these 12 sons who become 12 nations, who become a prototype for all the nations of the world. And God is not trying to separate Greeks or non-Jews from Jewish people. God blessed the Jewish people, but now because of the cross, he's blessed all of us. That's taught throughout the New Testament. You see Paul uh, breaking down those walls that are cultural or separation. And I bind those uh, groups in the name of Jesus that are trying to divide us from one another. Let us come together as one in the true body of Christ and allow ourselves to be led by the Lord. And notice that when we operate according to the scriptural principles, it says that the Lord's presence then comes upon us. I've been in church services where there wasn't enough power to blow up a brown paper bag because they were doing club activities. They were self-serving. But I've also been in church services where the Holy Spirit was so relevant, so real, and so manifesting that every person in the building could feel the peace and power of God at work. And notice that in this, 
passage, it says, my presence will give you rest. That's why we worship. I want to encourage you to be a worshiper with music, with reading the scripture, with art, with whatever uh, abilities God has blessed you with. Give it to God and worship. Some of you artists render uh, things unto the Lord that, that demonstrate his peace and power. Those of you that are great at writing songs or singing songs, uh, render it unto the Lord. Those of you that are great at building buildings, build buildings unto the glory of the Lord. And it's in the presence of the Lord that we have rest. I always called it after a Sunday, a happy tired, because I knew that we had overcome the evil one, that people had gotten saved, healed, delivered, restored, uh, ministered to. Uh, they were able to seek God and empowered by the Holy Spirit. This is a full gospel, spirit-filled Pentecostal ministry. We in include all of scripture. We don't say it's history or from another day or a time, but there's a power that's released. And notice that the presence of the Lord is what gives us that place of rest. How could Moses lead these people without God's presence? And notice that he says here, if, if you're going to let me lead, then I need your presence. In fact, don't even send us, God, if your presence isn't with us. Your presence is that distinguishing factor. There's a big difference between the Elks Club and a spirit-filled church service. There's a big difference between a, a group that maybe plays tennis or golf that's a club and, and a group of men or women that get together for the primary reason of letting the Holy Spirit flood their lives and change them. It's the power, it's that anointing. And notice that the Lord knew Moses and Moses knew the Lord. God was a friend of Moses and Moses was a friend of God. Do you have that relationship? I want you to. I want you to have that kind of relationship with God. Slip down with me if you would at verse 18 and then Moses said now show me your glory and the Lord said I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you I will proclaim my name the Lord in your presence I will have mercy on whom I have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion but he said you cannot see my face for no one can see me and live. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. This is that safe space. That's the title of the message. It's not the one that's manufactured by the world where you go in this space and nobody can be honest with their emotions or their feeling. No. He says, when my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock. A cleft is like a crack or an opening, a spot where he would place Moses as his glory passes by, his power, his anointing. And it says here, and when my glory passes by, I will put you there in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will, will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. No one has truly seen God unless they have the vehicle or ability to go in his presence, as Paul said, through the atoning blood of Jesus. Any person in the Old Testament that went into the Holy of Holies without being clean would die immediately. Unrighteousness and righteousness can never come together. You and I have all sinned and come short of the glory of God, but it's Jesus that came and paid that debt and gives us access. That's why Paul says, I come boldly before the throne of grace. We access Father God through Jesus. And notice that Jesus has been tested in every way that you and I have been tested in. And he was without fault. We've been tested and failed. 
That's why when we call on the name of Jesus, and you need to see the glory of God. You need to see his presence and power. I've needed that in my life. I've needed God to show up and tell me and affirm that what I was thinking, believing, and trusting for was truly God. I hesitate a little bit to share what I'm gonna share with you now, but I want to, and whether you believe or not is between you and your own mind and thinking. But Nancy and I have been seeking the Lord for how we are to move forward since we transitioned from being lead pastors at Val Vista Assembly of God in Hemet, California. And as the Lord has been opening up this door for us, I've been wanting to make sure this is what God would have us do, because there's a lot of good things you can do. I've done a lot of good things that weren't the God thing. And I've really taken time now over these last almost two years of seeking the Lord, what is the God thing? And allowing that to unfold. And it was in the middle of the night back in January of this year, and I was awakened and sometimes I wake up and I just lay there and pray and ask the Lord, Lord, if this is you, I just affirm, and 99% and of the time, God just speaks to me, and I know that it's his voice, because I've been listening to him since I was 14 years old. I totally surrendered to the Lord. And in the night, as I was asking for confirmation, I'd already received the primary word through the word, and my spirit bared witness that it was the Holy Spirit. But there, in my fifth wheel, standing out in the hallway between the shower and the restroom door, a tall angel figure appeared. I pinched my cheek a couple of times just to make sure that I was awake, and it was a real angel. And he was there probably 30 to 45 seconds, some length of time. It wasn't just a flash and go. But he was standing there he didn't say anything but it was the Lord revealing and just as you see Moses here saying I don't want to lead these people unless your glory goes before me and notice that God wants to let his goodness go in front of Moses and God wants his goodness to go in front of you in front of your marriage in front of your children in front of our grandchildren in front of our churches we need to get back in face-to-face -face church services. You need to belong to a Bible study, an accountability group. It was so refreshing to be here at Orange County uh, Assembly of God a Church here and go to a Wednesday night service. How refreshing that was uh, for me and to listen to uh, Pastor Derek share the word and on Sunday, uh, hearing the word of God uh, being spoken by Drew Smithson and seeing his wife on the front row worshiping the Lord. What encouragement and we need that. Let's get together and wherever you are, whatever country you're in, stay close to the Lord and notice that God wants his name proclaimed. If We lift Jesus up. If we proclaim his name, he's going to manifest himself and do mighty feats among us. God has already determined who he's going to exalt and have compassion and mercy on. He already knows what he's going to do. Why? Because he knows our heart. My heart has been recently broken by a number of well-known pastors that have fallen into immorality and sin. It always breaks my heart. It doesn't matter if it's a well-known person Although those that are leading large congregations or large ministries, it tends to really rock the faith of those that have grown under those leaders. I want to encourage you, don't put your eyes on man. Don't put your eyes on me. I'm just a bridge. That's why we call this the bridge. We want you to know Jesus. The bridge can't save you, but Jesus can. The cross can. And any ministry that doesn't have the cross 
that doesn't have that ability to get to Heavenly Father through the atoning blood of Jesus is useless. It's no more than a club. I trust as we look at this and see that God has chosen you. He's chosen you and has had compassion and mercy on you. Now rise up and do what he wants you to do. Notice that God said, you can't see my face and live. But if you'll go over and stand on the rock, in the cleft, in that crack, in that safe place, which as I believe it's Jesus and the word, the Bible and Jesus are synonymous. From Genesis to Revelation is the word. And when we go into that place and stand on that rock, when God's glory comes, his power comes, I just want to encourage you that you need to know his glory will show up and you don't know when that'll be. I didn't know it would be in my fifth wheel that the angel would appear and affirm and confirm, but he will. He'll show up at the right time, the right moment. He will do that for you. And notice he will hide us in that safe place with his hand. Friends, you're going to need that. You're going to need that more in 21 than you did in 20. And 20 was a wreck. How do we know where to stand in a safe space or a safe place? Believe me, it's not in Berkeley's campus of university. Those people that are not allowing conviction and I want to spare you judgment by you allowing conviction to occur. The closer you get to Jesus, the more you will be convicted. In fact, some people are so far from God that they don't feel conviction. You need the, conviction, the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Pray with me now, would you? Let Jesus prepare that cleft in the rock for you and when his glory shows up in your church service when his glory shows up in your car when you're worshiping when his glory shows up when you're in the shower singing praises unto God when his glory shows up in the middle of the night and you lift a hand toward heaven it's real it's real I know it's real it's the Pentecostal power and I know, I know it's real. Glory to God. Pray this prayer with me, would you? Say, Heavenly Father, I want more of you in my life than ever before. That's it, say it out loud. I want more of you in my life than ever before. I desire you to shield me in the cleft of the rock that when your glory comes by, I'll be impressed with who you are. I'll be lifted with who you are. And I'll grow in my relationship with you. I surrender my all to you. In Jesus' resurrected salvation name I pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching. Nancy's going to come and share a wonderful uh, personal testimony of blessing and provision and how God protected her. He wants to protect you as well. Be sure and email us. Stand with us. Uh, we are looking for a few more to help us uh, to be able to reach over 236 million people around the planet. If you would like to be a part of that, uh, contact us. Uh, you see on the screen our email and a way to get in touch with us and also a channel there. It'll let you get on our website and uh, we'll get our phone number to you. We'll text you if you're a, a regular giver. We'll, we'll be a part of your life and stand with you. We want to pray over you. So Nancy, come and share with us Amen. God's protecting power. Amen. Well, I had an angel encounter too. Not just you, but I forgot I had my glasses on. But um, this happened back in the early 90s, probably about 95, I guess mid 90s. And um, that was when I started my um, walking and my fitness walking and running. And um, there had been a siege of a, uh, a sexual predator 
in Bell Vista area, right where I was doing my walks and my runs. And um, this one day, it, this car went by that was, the, it was I could identify it as the car of the predator. And, um, and I saw it, and as he went past me, he turned around. Right behind me, he turned around. I always run facing traffic and so I could see him coming at me and I could see him turn around and he turned into a street that I was approaching on the on that corner and as I saw this I was already praying and I said dear Jesus protect me I don't know what this looks like protect me and so I was praying that prayer and as I prayed that I am always very aware of my surroundings when I'm out on a run and I there was nobody else around there was this car there was me and he was waiting right there for me at the corner and as I approached that corner I just kept praying and I was using my heavenly prayer language speaking in my heavenly tongue and all of a sudden just like that three people appeared on the opposite corner just appeared and 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 I just out of I don't know the Lord gave me the presence of mind and I said oh hi how are you and as I said that I could see this man look that way at those people and he just sped off so you could see he was not out for good <laughs> and so as he sped off and I went across the corner across the street to that corner those people were gone he was gone they were gone and wow. I was like what just happened mm. but it was the presence of the Lord it was that angel that came to protect me and kept me in that safe spot mm. thank God because I don't know what could have happened, but God was there to protect me, and I am so grateful for that, and praise God for that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, link with us on the on the, the contact information down below, and we will be happy to get back in touch with you, and we are believing for God to be with you and keep you in his safe spot as well. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.